let's take a look at this diagram. Here we have the light from an object, the incident rays coming in from the left, striking a mirror, and being reflected and becoming reflected rays on the right side of the picture. Those are represented by the white lines. So for all the rays of light that are coming in, the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. We can see that all the lines coming in are parallel, so all the reflected lines are also parallel. This is because for each one, the angle between the surface and the incoming ray is the same as the angle between the surface and the reflected ray. The thing is, our brains don't really work in a way that lets us understand reflections properly. See, the brain has a way of looking at light, which makes sense for almost every circumstance, that says that light always travels in straight lines. So it means that if we see white parallel lines coming up toward us, our brain assumes that they must have been traveling in a straight line until they're emitted by whatever source is giving them out. So our brain thinks that these light waves are coming from something behind the mirror. Let's draw a diagram of that. Here we go. We can see that in front of the mirror, we have a source of light, a little white star, and that light from this source comes up and strikes the mirror. Then it comes and reaches our eye. But our brain doesn't perceive light like that. It assumes that the light must be traveling in a straight line, and then it must be coming from an object over here, behind the mirror. This is called the reflected image of the object. It's what's known as a virtual image, because in reality, there's no such object there. For a flat mirror, the distance between the reflected object and the mirror is exactly the same as the distance between the mirror and the original object. That is, this distance is the same as this distance. Now, if we have a totally flat, smooth mirror, which I'm sure you'll agree is the easiest sort of mirror to deal with, then we have a plane mirror. The reason for this is because it's shaped like a plane. And we know from mathematics that a plane is a long, flat surface that never curves. They can be useful for household mirrors, if we want to look at our reflection. They can be useful in periscopes, if we want to look around a corner or above the water. Barcode scanners, because they can reflect the barcode to the reader. And sextants, a navigation tool like this which is very helpful for examining the position of stars and the sun in the sky. It was used more by ancient astronomers and ancient sailors than it is today, because of course today we have GPS. Although we can still use them to navigate. If the mirror's surface is not smooth, although it's still reflective, it stops behaving like a plane mirror. And instead of the distance between the object and the reflected image being the same distance from the shiny surface, it's not the same as if we had a plain flat mirror. So for that, we'll have to use slightly different techniques to see what, exactly what happens to the reflected light. When a beam of light reflects off a mirror, how does the angle of incidence, which we're going to call I, compare to the angle of reflection, which we're going to call R? We have a few options. The angle of incidence is less than the angle of reflection, is more than the angle of reflection, is equal to the angle of reflection, or we don't have enough information to tell. The question hasn't given us enough information to let us know what the correct answer is. The answer is, of course, that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. This is true for all waves bouncing off plane mirrors. So our answer is C, I equals R. What is the name given to a perfectly flat, smooth mirror? Is it a concave mirror, a convex mirror, a plane mirror, or a reflection mirror? Well, our answer here is that the mirror has to be shaped like a geometric plane if it's perfectly flat, which means that we can call it a plane mirror. So C is the correct answer. Concave and convex mirrors are different kinds of mirrors that we'll be covering in a little while. Draw the normal to this polygon at the point indicated. We can imagine that there are six different normals that we could draw, although those would be parallel in pairs. Remember that the normal at any surface 
is going to be perpendicular to that surface. If we're drawing a normal at this point, then the normal will be perpendicular to the hexagon at this point. Therefore, it'll look something like this. You've seen that I've drawn the right angle as well. If we were to extend this normal through to the other end of the hexagon, we could see that it would also be normal to this edge. And similarly, the normals drawn at the top or bottom edge of the hexagon would also be parallel, although they would not be parallel to this other normal that we've drawn. Complete the diagram to show how the ray of light reflects. We have an incoming ray in blue. We have a mirror. So how do we figure out how the object reflects? How the light reflects, rather? Well, we know that the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. But how can we see what the angle of incidence is? Well, the best way to do it would be to draw a normal. So let's do that now. We draw a, perpendicular, uh, a line that's perpendicular to the surface of the mirror that we're reflecting from. This angle inside, marked in yellow, is the angle of incidence between the incident ray and the normal. So the reflected ray will need to have the same angle between the ray and the normal. So it should look something like this. And that's our answer. That's how the ray of reflected light moves away from the mirror.